Off, 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 off. You have to get off. Hi. If you click this link, then you're probably here because you want to learn how to open, clean, and perhaps sin mod a vintage lens. I personally got into vintage glass because in the past I used to strive towards finding the fastest and sharpest, most color neutral glass. After some time, I just found my work was just looking a bit clinical and clean and I wanted something with a little bit more character. There's some gorgeous vintage lenses that are still being used in big productions, but uh, at a hefty price. And that hefty price is something I can't really afford. If a client really wants that look and is willing to pay for the rental, then great. But there's something quite alluring about owning your own set and being able to whip it out anytime you want to. Enter the rabbit hole of cine modding vintage steels lenses. I would not recommend it for the time poor. However, if you want to blow a solid amount of time on the internet forums and feed an insatiable hunger for bargain hunting, then look no further. This is a rabbit hole for you. I'm not going to get into a debate about which lenses are best and which year and where to get them and what copies and what prices, what color casts. I'll just say that it comes down to personal choice for a particular project. For this exercise, I'm gonna use contact size lenses. I started collecting these about seven months ago. Uh, I've got a pretty big range of them. I made a lot of mistakes, but I also learned a lot. One of the mistakes I made was buying a lot of these from the Japanese eBay market. Particularly these contact Zeiss that were made in Japan, they suffer from a lot of haze and separation issues. And here's one of them. This is a 35 1.4, beautiful lens. Now when I bring this up, you'll just see as I shine a torch through the bottom, you'll see little tiny white dots everywhere on that. Sitting there on the back element. Uh, not the one that's right at the back, but the next one down, so. So we're gonna clean that out. Uh, and then we're going to de-click the aperture ring while we're down there. Before we dive in, I'm just going to share a little bit about Phone Collab, who are the team that are bringing you this video today. When it comes to advertising your brand, product, or yourself, the best way to reach your audience is to tell your authentic story. Phone Collab is a digital brand and media agency that knows how to tell your story and connect with the right audience. Oh man, that sounds like such a plug. I'm so sorry. Anyway. Let's get to it. First, we'll just go, uh, what you'll need is the hazy lens and a uh, precision set of screwdrivers. And this is a little lens opener. And you're gonna need a cleaning cloth and some cleaning tissues and some isoprol. Nothing special about the isoprol, just make sure it's 100%, doesn't have any additives in it. One thing I should mention is always remember to clean your hands thoroughly before you open up any lens elements. I tend to wash my hands twice and dry them twice. Any oil that could be on your hands if they get on the inner elements, incredibly hard to get off. Now you might be watching this and thinking about doing it yourself to one of your lenses, or you might be triggered by the fact that I'm showing people how to do this. And I totally understand that. There's obviously only a limited supply of these vintage lenses. So I guess I'm warning you that if you are gonna get into this, really have had some practice in dismantling things and putting things back together, in particular small mechanics. Because once you've scratched one of the elements or you can't put it back together, then it's kind of just throw away. Uh, and yeah, that's a real shame. If you wanna practice, do what I did and buy a bunch of old shitty lenses. Found a whole box of old unusable lenses at a garage sale, uh, all scratched and fungus and really, yeah, bad quality Minolta's and yeah, I picked up that box with the intention to just pull them apart and put them back together and uh, it was really good practice. So maybe try doing that. If you do feel confident in doing it and you've uh, had a lot of practice pulling apart mechanics, then this is not that hard a job. So with these vintage lenses, they uh, tend to use thread locker for all the screws, which means they're in there really tight and they're incredibly hard to budge and very easy to actually thread the screw itself and meaning it'll be impossible to open once you've done that. So do be careful of that. Don't force anything. It should either come out easily or there's a way to get the thread locker off. The way to do that is to use a soldering iron. I pre-plugged in. Is it hot? Yes. What you do is you put the soldering iron onto the lens, which I'll just show you here. <laughs> Don't put it on the lens. Put it on the screw, on the top of the screw. For about 15 seconds. Do you want me to count you down? And then, 
Use a little bit of force, but not too much. It should come out really smoothly. Give it a little bit more of a soldering iron if it's not going. If it looks like it's not going to come out, I'm just going to take it that every screw is hard to undo, since that first one was. There we go. Okay, so when you're pulling this off, with the aperture ring, there's a little ball which is lodged in there which is the clicker of the aperture ring, I guess you call it. What you hear there clicking is a tiny little ball uh, placed in here. So when you pull the aperture ring off, uh, now it's very loose, I can just pull it straight off. Um, that ball is very easy, it can just fall out and roll off somewhere. The whole idea of declicking an aperture ring is because each click of this particular contact size lens is worth one stop of light. Now if you want anything in between, like a half stop or a third stop, well, it's kind of hard to do. You can, you can kind of put it there, but it'll easily be bumped into where the click is. So that's the idea, is to get rid of the little ball in there, which is just over here. Easiest way to get that out is with a little magnet. I don't have a magnet, but, but I, I thought I had some magnetized screwdrivers, which you can usually just, I'm just gonna, Right, another way of doing it would be just to get a tiny bit of tape. Just put the tape on it and pull it out like that. You can throw it out if you feel like you're deep flicking for life, but I'm gonna keep it. So let's get into pulling this apart. So as you can see here, this is gonna be pretty easy to pull this one apart. Some lenses are very hard uh, and some are fairly easy. I find that the Zeiss contacts are not too bad. You can see little notches here. So that would be the element that I've got to unscrew. Uh, and that's what this little tool is for. So just fit the tool into those little notches, tighten it up. And now you want to just give it a little bit of force but not too much. Be very careful it doesn't slide and scratch that back element because then you've really ruined your lens. Slowly unscrew. Another thing I, I tend to do is whatever I pull off, I put down the, the same way I pull off. Don't go flipping it around because these elements, some are convex, some are concave. Uh, if you pull them out and then start turning them upside down, then you will have trouble trying to remember which way they went in. I, I made that mistake before. In order to fix that, I had to go back to the Zeiss website and just download their diagram of how the lens is put together and figure out which way was convex and, and concave. So not too hard, but preferably don't do that. Okay, so pulling out the first element. Now just looking at this element that goes down that way side. So there we go. So is this the one that has the haze on it? It would be great if it was, because it would be super easy to clean just the first one, but I don't think it is. No. I'll just give it a quick clean now, so I did see a little finger mark on it. I'll put that one aside. Okay, so the next element, now as I turn it over, it should pop out. There might be more than one that pops out, so this is where you've got to be very careful. Yep. It's just the one that popped out and it popped out that way. Again, I'm going to put it down like that so I know that it goes on top like that uh, and in the order that I pull it out. So it'll go from, I'll pull it out left to right and then when I put it back together, right to left. That's just the way I do it. You might have a different way of doing it. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. I think, I'm hoping that this is the one that has the haze on it. Usually is the second one from, yeah, this is the one. From what I've seen, it seems to be the second one that usually has haze, but that's just been in three of the lenses I bought. Uh, could be different in other lenses. I tend to use a new tissue as much as possible. Try not to use a tissue twice in a row. I know I just did, but it's good practice to just keep using new ones. Just use one spray of this isotol. 
isoprol, isopropyl, I, isopropyl, isopropyl, I'm dyslexic. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. Let's have a look if that made a difference. That certainly did make a difference. It's made a huge difference, but I might give it a second go just because I can still see a couple more spots. I'm going to be very careful about not getting my fingerprints on it at all now. Don't do that. Okay, I did take note that the convex is at the top. The concave is at the bottom. It's a good idea to do that as you, when you first pull it out. I guess that's the bonus of video in this, is if you do make a mistake, you could just go back and look at the video. All right, so that's looking really nice. And I didn't realize this was gonna take so long. This video is probably gonna be quite boring in this section. Uh, but of course, clean takes ages. So for your viewing pleasure, I'm gonna fast forward and see you in a little bit. All right, we're back. I just put the last element back in and uh, just gonna screw it back on. And this is where you want to be super careful about scratching that back element. You don't want to do all this work and then come to the point where you scratch that back element. So very carefully. Clean as a saw. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is grease up the aperture. Uh, so, there seems to be a tiny bit of grease in here already. Again, use another tissue. I think that's just residual from 40 years of use. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of, <coughs> if I can find it, lanolin. Ding! This is lanolin, uh, otherwise known as sheep's fat. Now the reason I use this is because it doesn't have any petrochemicals in it, it doesn't evaporate. You don't want stuff evaporating inside your lens and onto the elements with heat and over friction and long time of use. This is what I found works really well uh, and the great thing about lanolin is it's got a super high viscosity, uh, meaning that it is very thick and that's kind of what you want with the, because you are losing the little click on your aperture ring, you want it to be fairly stiff when you're turning it. Uh, see, it has no click now, but we want it to be stiff that it doesn't bump and find a different aperture in such a small turn. You just add a little bit on the side here and where the ring is gonna sit. You just put, sort of put one layer and then see how you go, see how you like the feel of it. If you want a little bit more, then you add more. So we'll test that now, see how that feels. Good idea to sort of get rid of any bits that are not sitting on the aperture ring. So as you can see there, I've just made a little bit of a mess at the bottom there, but it's very easily fixed. So when the aperture ring goes in on this one, the numbers are at the bottom and that little bit goes into this little mechanism here. I don't know if you can see that, there's a little mechanism here that controls the aperture blades. And that's where you want this bit to sit. In there, push down, and then test it. Oh, that's worked really nice. Very smooth, but very grippy and strong. It's not gonna, it's not gonna flick to a different aperture with bumping the lens or moving the camera around, it's, it's gonna stick exactly where you want it to be. Now that you've added the lanolin to your aperture ring, the next thing you would do is lift the aperture ring off and then fit it into the mount off because you need that kind of angle to be able to put the lever back into the mount. Then put the whole thing back with the grease on, slide it back down it should just all go back on nice and smooth. You know around about where the mount is fitting, you just gotta find where all the holes meet up with the screws. 
So just keep spinning a little bit until you find that every hole matches up with the screw hole. And I'll put the first one in. One final wipe of that element. So that's it. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching. We'll be bringing out heaps more videos about cinematic techniques and creative tutorials and fun stuff like that. Might even do an unboxing. Probably not. But if you want to stay in the loop, hit the subscribe button. Like and comment below if you want to have a chin wag. Always down for that. Until next time, cheers. Bye. You as well now. Off, off. No, 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 no. Off, off. Sully, get off. Sully.